And we are back, episode 51 of Bash Mania, and fan favorite Jason Nolf is coming back on the show. This is probably the third or fourth guy now who's come back on for another episode, and it seems like when they come back on, the stories get even better. So I'm pumped to start bringing back on some guests that have already been on while continuing to bring on new guests. Today, Jason's going to join me to talk about his quarantine experience, his faith, talk about some mindset stuff. We're actually going to talk through his controversial match with Hyde Lead NCAAs, talk about Gilman joining the NLWC, wrestling Chenzo at the feral all sorts of good stuff so i hope you enjoy this conversation if you do be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave a five-star rating review on apple Podcasts, and let others know that they should listen too you can also share out the episode on social media and let your friends and family know that they should listen to the podcast and if you really want to support the podcast get some apparel at bashmania.com it's bashomania let me tell you something brother he gave us everything he had in him tonight what you gonna do when Bashomania runs wild? Oh, it's gonna be a good one. And business just picked up here on the podcast. Oh, yeah. And he is back. Jason Nolf, how are you, man? Doing good, Justin. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's such a different circumstance from the last time. I mean, you just came on a couple months ago, but already so much has changed. And you're not even in State College right now, are you? No, right now I'm in Omaha, Nebraska with my wife. Um, she has uh, her NWSL soccer season was postponed. So um, we got to meet up in Nebraska and spend some time with her family and um for a few weeks at least. So you're not there to train with Burroughs? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Dude, so we were kind of talking about it, and, you know, I, I want to talk about the Olympics being postponed, but, you know, it's funny, this quarantine's having such different effects on everybody, and I was thinking about it just before we hopped on here, and for you, like, your wife is a professional soccer player who trains in a different state, and you guys spend a lot of time apart, and I don't know how many people know that, but this has got to be a blessing in disguise for you guys to be able to spend this much time together now. Yeah, it's definitely um, it's definitely good. We're kind of like going back and forth, hoping that her season gets canceled and so that we can go <laughs> spend the summer in State College and do some stuff at home. But I also want her to be able to play. So uh, I'm having mixed emotions on that. But so it's definitely good. What's the game plan as of now? Like, Because she has family in, in Omaha, right? Yep. Yeah, pretty much all of her family's in either Iowa or Omaha. So we're just been relaxing. Um, I've been playing a little golf. I've been a little, golf, <laughs> yeah, a little golf. I've been uh, taking lessons about four times a week for an hour, and then playing about three rounds a week. Are you going to uh, transition to golf when you're done with wrestling? <laughs> I've always had that in my mind that I might be on the PGA tour someday, but right now I'm just focused on wrestling. So how good are you at golf? Are you, are you to golf what you are to wrestling? No, I'm about, <laughs> I'm about a 15 handicap, which means I shoot about 15 over par yeah. I'm in the eighties, nineties. Yeah. I don't keep a handicap when I golf for a reason. No. <laughs> <laughs> so th this, this quarantine is having a lot of impacts in, on you and you've never really had a break like this. Have you We're like, you're not training for so long. I compare it to uh, times where I've been injured, where like, especially during like my junior year when I got injured for six weeks, I couldn't really do anything, but I, w I was doing a lot of rehab. So right now I'm just, just taking this time to relax and um, taking time to refocus on what's really important, which is God and family and um, loving what I do. And uh, sometimes a break like this is good mentally and physically and uh emotionally too so and i know for me it's it's been like a roller coaster where one day i'm super grateful that i, I get to spend more time with my wife and, and we get to hang out a lot more and then the next day i'm like well i kind of miss business being in full swing and, and different opportunities like we're gearing up to build a house i, I want to be diligent and make money and, and do things and kind of rob the certain opportunities and it's kind of like you just said going back and forth with wanting Maddie's soccer season to be canceled. Like, yeah, you guys want the time together, but you also want her to be able to play. How are you balancing those kind of ups and downs of just maintaining that like balance of perspective? 
we just have to have a po- positive attitude throughout everything and try to find the blessings and and what we're given right now. We can't really control what's going to happen, and we can't control uh, anything else other than our attitudes. And um, so I've been just trying to remain positive and um, just they're they're, they're t- difficult times always, but it's how you react to it. And um, so I'm just trying to be as positive as possible. And was that your reaction when you, when you found out that the initially the trials and then that the Olympics were postponed? Like, was it that kind? Of, did it take a while to to get to that, or did that happen pretty quickly? So I was um, I wasn't too upset with the trials being postponed just because <laughs> I'm coming off a I'm coming off a knee injury. I figured I'm, that. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I wasn't quite 100 percent healthy yet, and I'm still not. So. Um, this time is just really good time for me to heal my knee and kind of stay off the mat. And, um, because I was taping up my knee for every practice. So it was definitely, sure. if I had to tape it up, then you know that it wasn't hundred percent yet. And, uh, but yeah, it just gives me another year. And also I'm just coming out of college a year out of college. So it's going to give me a whole other year to just get, get better at freestyle. Cause I never really wrestled it much when I was younger. So right. I'm excited just to learn more. And you might be up at 86 kilos by the time the next, but by the time we we finally have these Olympics, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a possibility. We'll see. So, and is the general consensus for those you those people around you like the same? Like a lot of the guys I've talked to, nobody's too bummed. I feel like a lot of guys were bummed about the NCAA's, and there's definitely a few guys that. You talk to a guy like Burroughs who's, you know, towards the end of his career. Or you talk to a guy like Frank Molnaro who now hung up his shoes because he can't keep his body down to 65 for, you know, an entire another year. Is that the general consensus of the people around you? It's it's the same thing? Like, this is really a blessing in disguise and, and it's all for better? Yeah, I think, like, the young guys especially, we're just getting started. and. Right. Um, we're at the beginning of our career, so it's, it's not really a big issue. Like if you plan on competing for the next four to eight to 12 years, then, um, it's not really an issue for us. Cause it's going to happen. Like the Olympics are going to happen next year. So we'll be ready. But guys like Frank, I was thinking about, uh, his life just kind of got disrupted because yeah. this was his, this was his plan. And, uh, but you always have to be able to pivot from one thing to another and you got to be able to adjust. And Frank, I think will do a good job of that. Uh, where he got a coaching job at Arizona state, right? Yep. Yeah. So I think, uh, with prayer, I think you just have to trust that God will lead you along the right path. And, um, and that's all you can, that's all you can think about. So, yeah. And that's basically what he said too. Like he was, when he told me the news, uh, he told me a while before it broke that, that he took the job and, and he was just overwhelmed saying like, God is so good. God's grace is, is so abundant. Like he was, he was overwhelmed because he had, he felt like that truly was the right path. And comparing that to, to the path you're on now, like what has been your path to right now? It's, it's a lot of little things. Like you, you seem to have your head on straight from a, maintaining a proper perspective, but even with your training, like how are you dealing with, with training and you know, your atmosphere is a little bit different being in Omaha right now than state college. How are you maintaining that that consistency and, and kind of making those decisions on what you should do? I'm kind of just going with the flow right now. Uh, we have the NLWC group chat, and everybody just kind of sends in a workout, and we just do that workout. Um, but it's it's been cool to to be able to adjust and kind of do things that I hadn't done before. I'm doing a lot of body weight workouts and a lot of stance and motion. So that's uh, – I was actually – working on stance and motion, just, uh, visualizing like a, a certain hand fight. And now it felt really awkward, but, the, <laughs> and, and the more that, the more that I did it, I got so used to it leading a certain leg in a certain position. And that's just helped me. And I think that's going to help me a lot. Uh, cause I never really took the time to do it before. And I'm assuming too, that this is opening up new opportunities for you, whether it's on the training side or even kind of working on your brand more and doing things like you announced yesterday that you're going to start going live every night and doing a little workout on Instagram and reading from the Bible. And that that's pretty cool because this, this downtime has allowed you to now do that. And I'm sure that's going to impact people who, you know, they there's a lot of people who don't know the truth or they don't know who to turn to or they don't know those things. And now you would have never had that opportunity. You might have. You don't know. Yeah. Like, 
what happens if the Olympic trials were, were on and whether you make the team or don't make the team, your, your life is kind of different in that regard. But you didn't, I don't know if you would have had this amount of downtime. We were like, okay, I mean, you've been telling me like, man, I'm bored. I'm bored. I want to do stuff. And it's created opportunities like that where now you can share your faith. What does that mean to you to be able to have that type of opportunity? Well, I was reading two nights ago and I was just like, what, what does God want from me? How can I spread the, spread the word? And, um, and I was, and I have wanted to do this, like kind of push up challenge each, each night and just go live on Instagram and have the fans or whoever wants to tune in, do, do push ups with me. Cause, uh, I think it's just like good to, good to communicate through this, through this time. And, yep. um, I was like, well, I could do that. I just, it just came in my head. I could do that. And then I could read the Bible after, and that'd be a really good way to, to share the, share the word of God and, um, to also get a workout in. And if people want to tune in just for the workout, that's fine. If people just want to come to the reading, that's, that's even better. So, um, I just, I just think it's, uh, it just kind of popped in my head and I thought it was a really good idea. I just did it the next and has it been a lot of just trusting your gut? Is it prayer? What is it that, you know, we, we were talking and we'll get into it in a minute about how your mindset has evolved from youth wrestling to high school to college. And you are somebody who I know constantly tries to evolve and, and adapt. And you're doing that now kind of at hyperspeed. You're, you're adapting to closures and stay at home orders and this and that. What do you think it is that's leading you to do these different things like wanting to do wanting to go live and do workouts and the importance of communicating with people and the importance of sharing the word. Like what is it that's leading you? You think to do that? I think just a lot of people are struggling right now. I don't, um, some with, uh, just financially people are struggling and yep. some with their families. And, um, I mean, a lot of people care a lot about money. So during this time, like it causes other issues as well. And I just think that uh, people can find hope in the Bible and and what God says. And um, and I, I would like to be like a resource to people if they need anything to reach out to me. I said DM me on Instagram, and I'll try to get back to as many people as I can. But I just think it's a it's an important time that we come together as a community, as a as a church, and uh, just help out those in need. And I think that me just I'm usually not on social media but I think now it's a good time for me to be on social media in case anybody needs anything and if they don't need anything that's good too but. yeah and you've always been active about your faith and bold about your faith but this is a whole new opportunity because you know I had a great conversation last night with Brandon Slay about how people can use social media for for good right now and how now with everything going on th this is the time for the church to kind of shine and encourage those who Otherwise, would maybe never be tuning into an Instagram live or, you know, I know my pastor said something like, I think somebody messaged him and basically because that person who was kind of falling away in the world wasn't at the bars the night before, they were up listening to a live stream of church on Sunday morning. And there's a lot of opportunities now. And, you know, is that kind of liberating to you to be able to have that opportunity where you're not typically on social and this downtime has kind of allowed that social that's got to be like... I don't want to say self-rewarding, but rewarding to a degree that you get to do something that you're super passionate about. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it just makes me feel like I'm doing something where before I was, wasn't really, I mean, I was, I was leading by example and I try to do the right things always and set a good example for those that kind of like watch me or, uh, watch my wrestling videos and I try not to be, uh, arrogant and, that kind of stuff. But this is a, this is a, just a different opportunity for me to use social media rather than not to promote myself to, pr to promote God. Yeah. And I think that's uh, what I'm focused on. And going back to what we kind of mentioned about your mindset, adjusting from youth to high school to, to college and now to the senior level, I'm curious at both how your mindset has evolved and, and how your faith too. I mean, your faith, as you go through different stages of life, your faith has different roles. And you're now in a season where at the senior level, you're kind of kicking off your senior level career with being able to be super active with your faith and share more about your mindset. So I'm curious about the mindset development and the faith evolvement from youth to high school to college to now. Yeah, I'd say mindset. Um, when I was younger, I was really pretty serious. Like if I was at practice, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really 
smile. If I was competing, I wouldn't be smiling before my competition. I'd be, I'd keep a straight face yep. and uh, not really like joke around at all. And then when I got to college, we kind of, I kind of started doing that because I started enjoying wrestling more and um, enjoyed the challenge. And I think the, the guys at the coaches at Penn state kind of implemented that, like, Hey, you don't have to take this so seriously. It's just a, it's just a game. Right. Yeah. And when we focus on that and realize why we started in the first place was to have fun and to, to do something. It's like, why did, why do we shoot hoops? Why do, why do the NBA uh, players, why do they start shooting hoops in the first place? It's good because it's fun. And when you sit back and realize that what we're doing is basically a dream come true, then we can smile about it. But um, I remember a story from uh, my freshman year after after Big Tens, my uh, Young Guns coach Jody came up to me and was like, hey, I saw you were smiling before your match. And uh, I don't want to say that's why you lost, but just remember, like, just stay focused and everything. And um, I ended up losing that year again at Nationals, but I just kept smiling because I knew that um, that's – who I was becoming and I was becoming more joyous person. And I think that goes along with my faith yep. was that's kind of when I started to, to really put my hope and trust in Jesus. And that's, uh, I had a lot more reasons to smile than I did before. For sure. And from a standpoint of, you know, when somebody you look up to, like a coach tells you, Hey, I don't know if you did this, if this is why, like whether it's critiques or judgment or whatever, how did you find the ability to, I don't want to say overcome that, but kind of have some self-awareness and analyze and say, you might be right about this, but I think this. Like, How do you balance the ability to discern the, the, the feedback? I think, uh, I think the biggest thing that you can be is coachable. So I always take into consideration what my coaches are telling me. And if I don't agree with it, then I'll ask questions. Yep. And I'm, I'm sure you could talk to coach Cody, uh, a lot about that. Cause not that I don't trust him. I just want to know why, yep. why people think what they think. So when Jody told me that I was like, okay, you might be right. Like I, I did lose that match. And, but I looked at, at the season as a whole and I looked at how well I was doing overall. And I mean, I was smiling before the first time that I wrestled Martinez too. Yeah. And that turned out good for me. So I don't really think it was, I don't really think it was that I, I was still focused and I was still taking it seriously. I'm not smiling or talking during my match when yeah. I, when it's time to go, then it's time to go. But I don't really think there's any reason to be all uptight and everything before your match. Cause I think that just kind of makes you freeze up when you, when you're, when you allow yourself to smile, uh, before you go out on the mat, then you kind of free up your body to, to stay loose and, even though you still say focus, it's not, it's not like smiling doesn't equal focus. And I remember you told me last time when when you came on here that you've always been kind of stoic, just it's how you were, you were raised. Like your dad kind of taught you to not show too much emotion. And you know, when you win, you've always done the the similar kind of thing of just waving to the, to the audience and, and being done. you never really, you didn't show too much emotion. How did you balance that? Like, being joyful but not not showing too much yeah i i I just when i go out and compete i always expect to win that's just who i am and that's what i do so uh so i I visualize it pretty much every day after every practice i visualize getting my hand raised both my hands go up in the air and i do that every single day and um so it's just i'm just going uh kind of going through my visualization when i'm out there and I just do the same thing. Even if I have a forfeit, I put both my hands in the air. Like yeah. it's, it's funny, like, cause, I, <laughs> cause that's what I do and that's what I practice and that's what I visualize. So, yeah. um, I, I've, there's been a couple of times where I wanted to celebrate, but then I'm like, no, I don't need to get in this guy's face right now. Like what, when did I, you want to celebrate? Can you think of any um, matches particular? There are two matches where I kind of was fired up was my senior night against the Buffalo kid. <laughs> because he kind of danced he danced on me yeah and i wasn't i wasn't mad about that but so i went for a cradle and i slipped over the <laughs> i top remember that he, vividly he did like the he did the conor mcgregor dance on me and i yeah. was okay with that because it just gave me an excuse to get more physical with them yeah. i wasn't mad at him or anything yeah. i was just like um but then i wanted to like i wanted to celebrate after that match but i 
uh, kind of kept my composure. And then the other match was at Ohio State, I think my senior year against Keyshawn. Yeah. Um, I was just fired up because I thought I wrestled a really hard match. And uh, it was big for the team because even though we won, Roman won and Nick Lee won, it was uh, it was still a big match. So. How did you push down the emotion? Like, how did you not? I feel like some. I feel like there's a lot of people in the sport who want to kind of do the same, and then they win, and their emotion gets the best of them. How did you balance that so that your emotion doesn't get the best of you? It's like the opposite. It works the opposite way for me. Like, really, <laughs> I would have to force a celebration, even though I might like be thinking about it. I'm like, that's just not me, and I, I'm not going to do something that isn't natural, and that's yeah. and that's not me. But like, I might want to do it sometimes, and and I think it's okay to celebrate. My favorite person to watch celebrate is Mark Hall. He has, the the, he, he has the best celebrations, <laughs> and he looks so cool doing them. But uh, I'm just like, dang! If I try to do that, I would definitely blow it. <laughs> I, I would look like the, I would look like the most awkward white boy ever. You know, it, it's funny too because you've always maintained a balance of, I think, humility and grace. And you didn't have too many losses in college, so you can't talk too much about your losses. But there's been matches that didn't necessarily go your way or that were controversial. And you kind of maintain that same routine of, of celebration. Do you ever get to the point where, like, you don't want to celebrate if you're mad at a match? Like, we've talked about the Hydley match a bit where... You know, that that was an interesting match. Like, well, let's talk about that match for a minute. You, your kind of mindset going through that, and then I guess we'll get to the to the celebration part. But I remember I hated it. I remember being there and, and the crowd was booing you and I I was pissed. Like how it's not his it's not his fault. Like what are you booing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't really care what the crowd uh if the crowd boos me or not. I think I've been I've been booed a couple times, but uh when I go out there, I, I wrestle as hard as I can, and that's all I can do. And when I'm done, I put my ankle anklets right on the line, and I get my hand raised or I don't, and that, and that's what it is. But uh, that match, I was that was a, that was definitely a weird match for me because uh, I was in on his leg right away, and he he had good defense. Um, so I was kind of hesitant the rest of the first period, and then he almost scored on my on me at the end of the first period. And the refs originally gave it two, and right. I thought it was two. I thought it was two originally, and I was expecting that. I was like, okay, that's fine. I gave up a takedown. I don't care if I give up a takedown. Right. I'm gonna keep scoring. And then when they overturned it, I was like, well, that was that's pretty cool because um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, I thought I really thought I gave up a takedown, and that that was gonna suck, but I was gonna be able to come back from it. And then I kind of wrestled really poorly the rest of that match, and kind of wrestled with fear rather than because you got taken down not because i got taken down but just i don't know what why i was doing that i was just yeah. in, i was wrestling not to lose at that point because i was like okay that was kind of close but right right off the second period i got an escape and a takedown right away yeah and then i kind of just held on to the lead and almost cost me at the end of the match yeah. so that definitely was um that was hard for me because that's not how i wrestle and i was a little upset with myself with the way yeah. I competed, but, um, I got the win and that's all that mattered at that point. And now it was time to, uh, not focus on the past anymore, but to look forward to the next match. And I, I thought I wrestled good in the finals match. Yeah. And, and how do you balance when you have a match like that, where you, you have to do two things on one aspect, you have to learn from it and say, okay, like you just told me, okay, Hey, I wrestled with fear. I shouldn't have done that. And on the other hand, it's it's I, I gotta let go and move to the finals now. What's that process look like of of doing both? Learning from the match and not forgetting about it, but also moving on now and worrying about the finals match and your next match. Um, so when I when I went back in the hallway after the semis, they do interviews and yep. um they take your picture and everything and ask you questions and I was just like I like couldn't even think for about 20 <laughs> minutes. I was just really? like, so I was so out of whack. I was like, what the heck just happened? And I like, I wasn't happy at all, but I wasn't like mad. Yeah. I was just like, I was just like out of whack. So, um, kind of had to interview and the interview helped me because they were like, okay, you had a close match. How do you adjust? And I just thought reasonably and with, uh, with a specific process and, um, I, I found re refound my focus and realize, okay, that's not who I am. That's not who I'm going to be tomorrow. 
and it's just time to adjust and be better. Dude. And it's anytime I tell my, anytime I focus on an attitude adjustment, I'm pretty good at that. But when I don't focus on it, that's when it can get the best of me. But if I focus on an attitude adjustment, it's really easy for me. Does your faith come into play too, right after a match like that? Like kind of not, not refocusing on what's important, but kind of keeping that proper perspective of what's happened's happened. And I need to just stay focused. Yeah, I think, th I think definitely, um, that's just kind of like the morals and values that have been instilled with me through my lifetime and through reading the Bible, just, um, just staying focused and, uh, not letting, not letting the wind sway you, but to let it, uh, ignite a fire. So, um, that's kind of what I focus on. Yeah, for sure. And I know we talked about it again the last time you were on the podcast about before the finals match and you lifting your life up to the Lord and saying, here I am, like whatever happens, happens. And, and that's how you're able to wrestle with a piece and, and wrestle and, and go out there and have fun. Do, do you do that in, in every match, regardless of how big or small the match may be? Um, I So I pray every before every match yeah. and I say, God, just let me wrestle the best I can with what I'm given. I don't pray for a win. I don't pray that um, I usually pray that there's no injuries in the match yep. um, between me or the other guy. And then I pray that I do the best I can with what I'm given. And I pray the, that for my teammates as well. Um, so when I go out there, I'm definitely, I feel spirited, but I don't always um, do a good enough job saying, here I am, God, like this is for you. But yeah. I, I think in the bigger matches, I definitely do do that because it's a, uh, it's a bigger match. I don't yeah. know. I just, <laughs> no, it, it makes sense. And, and I figured, I mean, but before a huge match, you obviously have more time to think and, and you are kind of self analyzing more. And that's when you, when you're thinking more, you're, you know, it, it definitely makes sense. So moving, switching gears a little bit, it was announced recently in the last couple of days that Thomas Gilman's joining the NLWC. What's your initial thoughts on that? Well, my initial thought was, is he going to be in the dodgeball games before practice? <laughs> That's That was my first thought. Um, it definitely caught me off guard. I was like, wow, because I've, I've, I've worked out with, uh, with Gilman before a couple years ago, and I thought he was a, I thought he was a nice guy, and yeah. uh, I know that he likes to learn, and he's not a guy that's going to go through the motions and yeah. kind of just – because even though some people are hard workers – there's there's obviously the the traditional uh version of going through the motions which is they don't work hard they just show up to practice and they're lazy but then there's right. also the, the version of um there's also the version of going through the motions that's okay i'm gonna go work really hard but i'm not gonna ask any questions i don't really care if i'm getting better because you'll see people in in all kinds of high school rooms and all kinds of college rooms they they go balls to the wall the entire practice but they, they don't, they don't want to learn anything. They're not focused. Yeah. They're not asking questions. They're just, they just want to go hard. And, and, um, and I don't think that's a very positive way to, to head into practice. Like, I think it's important, more important to focus on learning rather than going hard. And there's a time for going hard. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but, sure. um, but I know Gilman, when I worked out with him at the OTC, he was focused on learning and, uh, when we go live, when it's time to go hard, he would go hard too. So I think he'll be a, I think he'll be a really good um, asset to our team. It's just going to elevate the the level of wrestling in the, in the Nanny line wrestling club. And we have a lot of good guys in there now. Yeah, for sure. And it's quickly becoming one of the top RTCs in the country. If you look at just the caliper of guys and their accomplishments and talents. And I'm curious when, you know, I, when I had Gilman on the podcast to talk about it, I had said, like, you're you're now a Nittany Lion, right? Like, you've been a Hawkeye, and you'll always be a Hawkeye, but now you're 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 forming an alliance and becoming a Nittany Lion. And I asked him what it meant to him to kind of to develop a new loyalty. And I'm curious, when a guy like Gilman comes into the room permanently, or a guy like Snyder from Ohio State, are they no longer Hawkeyes and Buckeyes in your mind? Like, they're Nittany Lions instantly? Yeah. Like, what's that process like? I think, like, it, it takes, like, I think it is instant because if you're training with if you're training with people and uh you're a part of a team you're going to start rooting for the people that you're training with cuz you want them to succeed yep. just like you would want them to want you to succeed and 
so it's kind of a brotherhood when you when you come like it, it's it's kind of weird like to say that um Gilman would root for Penn State over the Hawkeyes in a duel <laughs> but I think that's the way it should be yeah. because that, that's who he's training with that's who he's trying to make better that's who's making him better um and same with Kyle for Ohio State like you I think you gotta root for whoever you're training with which is kind of weird to think about but it's just the reality and um that's just what it is yeah for sure and you know one thing that a lot of people are talking about is the competition within a room and you know Gilman has said this had absolutely nothing to do with Spencer Lee and when Gilman was on my podcast here last week I didn't even bring that up because he told me he had nothing to do with it so I didn't even want to bring it up to him and a couple of people were like tweeting me like well why didn't you ask him about you know, Spencer Lee. And I said, well, I don't think it was relevant. But, you know, I do think one thing that's relevant is competition within a room. And I think it, from my perspective, it seems like it's more something the fans like to make a big deal out of. Like after you and Chenzo wrestled at the Feral, everybody's like kind of whispering. Like all of a sudden you guys were like not used to that and, and going to the coaches at the break was, was almost like kind of new. And everybody's like, oh, that, that what, what did he you know what I mean like it, they, they're making a bigger deal out of it than I think it actually is and I'm curious of what your perspective is on competition within a room and I think this whole free agency thing is, is great and it's getting to a point to where you can have guys competing for the same spot in in a room you have it in the NLWC at, at multiple weights and yeah. I'm just curious on your perspective on maintaining a proper perspective about competition in the room um, yeah, I think, I think it just makes you better. I mean, I grew up with Chenzo, um, and we've been really good friends pretty much all of our lives. And, um, when we're in the room, we're not thinking, oh, we might, we might meet up in a tournament or, I mean, we trained the whole week leading up to the Bill Farrell. And, uh, I think we warmed up the morning of the Bill Farrell and we just know that, okay, if we, if we meet, we're just going to wrestle the hardest we can because that's what we do. And it's nothing personal. It's just we both are wrestlers, so we're going to wrestle. And I think people get caught up with stuff that doesn't matter. Um, I, I just think that uh, that's what you want. You want to wrestle the best guys in tournaments, and you want to wrestle uh, You want to wrestle the best guys in practice. You want to wrestle the best guys in tournaments. So I don't really – I view it as a positive thing because um, why would you want to go through a tournament or – a, a practice and wrestle guys that aren't that good yep. if you're trying to be the best and it's just it's more fun when you're wrestling good guys it's a lot more competitive and um so i view as i view as a positive thing how do you balance it out from a standpoint of if you guys were to meet in the olympic trial finals and one of you is preventing another from making the olympic team and fulfilling a dream how do you keep that perspective through that if it like were to get to that level of hey, it's you or me for this, you know, Olympic spot. I would love that. <laughs> I, would, I would love to be in the Olymp Olympic team trials finals with Chenzo, just because we've been we've been friends since we we're like I said since we were young, and sure. to see how far we've come. Um, just I mean, I don't care who I wrestle, right? It's it doesn't matter who I'm gonna wrestle. I want to wrestle the best guys, and if that's me and Chenzo in the finals, then that's that's good. Right. And, and if, if I win, then I win. If I, if I lose then I lose, but I'm still going to do the best that I can. And I'm not, I'm not worried about the results. I'm worried about my effort. And obviously I do want to win and that'll suck if I, if I would lose. Um, but I'm, that's not going to define who I am and, and that's not going to change my life. Just a match is not going to change my life. So, um, so I, yeah, I'd love to, I would love if it was me and me and Chenzo. Es especially the, at the Bryce Jordan job. Center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so la last thing here, and then I'm going to let you go. You got this new weekly show, daily show on Instagram Live. Tell people who are listening what to expect and, and when, when to tune in. So it's 9 p.m. Eastern uh, time every night for the foreseeable future until kind of things until things open up again and i might continue it after that as well but basically what we do it's, it's called nights with nolf and um we just do a quick five to ten minute workout last night we did 100 push-ups 50 sit-ups and 25 squats all body weight uh you don't really need to bring any 
weights or equipment unless you really want to. Um, and then afterwards, I'll read a, a, a Bible chapter from, uh, we're starting with Matthew, which is the first book of the New Testament. And we read chapter one last night. It was the genealogy of Jesus. And it was, uh, it was one of the more boring passages because <laughs> yeah. I was like, I like forgot, I forgot that, uh, for that it was the genealogy. So I start reading it and I look at the page. It's a whole page of genealogy. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. It's my first night. <laughs> but I was like, I was like thinking about skipping through it, but I'm like, nope, this stuff's important too. Yeah. So it talks about how God, uh, protected the bloodline that leads to the Messiah. So, um, so yeah, we, so we do a workout, um, very short, uh, quick workout. And then just a, a chapter in the Bible, we'll go through the gospel of Matthew first. So, um, that's what you can expect. And it's not going to be something that's super long and just, uh, grow physically stronger and spiritually stronger through this, uh, time of desperation, time of, uh, time of need. So, yeah, I love it. I know I'll be tuning in. I tuned in last night to tell you do clapping push-ups instead of regular push-ups. <laughs> That'd be tough. Yeah, I, I read that. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to uh, read more of the comments too on on Instagram. It was hard because uh, because I was doing push-ups and that push-ups suck. So um. <laughs> sweet man. Well, I love it. Anything else you got for me before I let you go? Uh, no. Thanks for having me on and uh, stay safe out there. Awesome. We'll speak soon, man. And that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. If you did enjoy this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more episodes. As always, if you've got feedback on this episode, send it to me. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, email, the website, you name it. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'll be back with another episode shortly. See ya. And the beat goes on. Zon. Zon.